Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming today for this uh, lovely evening. I would like to welcome you all at the Beirut Port Competition Ceremony evening. And we would like to start with the Lebanese anthem. <laughs> Your Excellencies, University Representatives, Competition Participants, dear guests. My name is Mariana Vahalova and I am the Vice President of Inspirali and I will be one of your hosts for tonight. Good evening everyone. My name is Yara Bisani. I am an architect and I am also super thrilled to be part of this event taking place today. And uh, now I would like to ask all of you to take a minute of silence for the victims that lost their lives on August 4th, 2020. Thank you, everyone. First of all, we would like to invite the president of the competition of Inspirely Awards, Carlos Meikal, on stage, as well as president of IAST, Thomas Faltner. Please welcome. Dear Excellencies, dear Governor, dear Mayor Jamal Litani, dear architects, dear professors, dear students, dear distinguished guests, it's almost seven years we have started Inspire Award. In that time, it was our aim and our goal to support students of architecture regardless of their economic, ethnic, or social conditions. In that time, I had no idea that we can once help cities or entire countries. You have to imagine that when you create competition, which is now with 150 countries, 4 million followers, 860 jurors, that it has a dark side because you have friends everywhere in the planet. We have friends in Yemen where is starvation. We have students and architects and jurors in Ukraine. We have jurors and students in Cuba asking for help with the job. We have everywhere attention when anything bad happened. And it has happened here when the blast was seen in uh, we watch it in TV immediately I was calling to all my friends teachers 
students if they are okay. Happily, they was. And then, because of the COVID situation, in our news, in Czech Republic, the story about the Beirut disappeared. In the same time, I saw how was in Paris the cathedral burned and everybody was interested in it. And I was thinking, hey, what's happening? He was disappearing 30% of the city and there is no topic for our news. And after that, after I think it was uh, one year and a half in November, Alexander Zane called me. We were talking via WhatsApp and he said, hey, what about to help somehow? And then we make an idea to invite the entire world for this competition. And for me, it was like something unbelievable, unbelievable when, I, when we were in touch with Jamal Itani. And I thought in that time that there, are, there will be a lot of competitions, that you have some solution for the port. But it was a miracle that maybe we are the one who can help. And in that time, I have to say, I didn't know that there is something more in common between our country, which is Czech Republic, and your country. Maybe I need to go a little bit to the history. The biggest blast in the city before was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the Second World War. And then it was here. But in Hiroshima was only one building prevailing from Czech architect. And here, one building saved the old city. It was from the Prumstav Pardubice, our Czech company, very close to my house. They built this silo. I would like to ask if we can play the video which we used for promotion of this competition. So please. and global project, but we are not alone. I have here with me a partner, President Thomas Fartner, President of IAST, one of the biggest organization helping students to find a job. And uh, we decided to be a partner for this competition and it is the start of our future cooperation. So please allow me to invite Thomas Fartner to say something to you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, dear Governor Mavana Bud, dear Mayor Chamalitani, dear University representatives, dear architecture community of Lebanon, dear award nominees, my dear friends. I and myself have the privilege to be partner of Inspirelli since June 2021. And you might wonder why a 75-year-old global student exchange organization decided to team up with Inspirelli, who offers architecture awards for students. Looking closer, you will see that both Inspirelli and IST have a lot in common. We both care about the education and personal development of young people 
in Spirelli with a focus on architects, while IST offers paid internships for a wide range of study fields with a good share of internships in architecture and civil engineering. Our presence in more than 80 countries, the ability to provide several thousand students a year an internship experience in another country, a network of over 1,000 universities. My name is Alexander Zain. I'm an architect and the president of this competition. And it's such a particular honor for me to stand here today to celebrate a substantial achievement. An achievement not only made by the Inspirelli team or the Municipality of Beirut, but, 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 a, but a very amazing, substantial achievement made by each and every student with their instructor who have gave their hearts, their times, and their ideas to our beloved city of Beirut. Two years, ago, when, two years ago, when the explosion happened, we all faced weeks of sleepless nights. It was terrible. There was a voice in my head telling me that I should do something for my city. I felt the responsibility and the duty towards my country as an architect. So I decided to take action. I decided to contribute to my city. So there were two projects. First, I wanted to execute this water settlement project to shelter all of the people that lost their homes. And second, is to forge and launch a worldwide international competition that revolves around the topic, rebuilding the port of, Be of Beirut and its future. I wanted to let the whole world think, analyze, and talk about Beirut and its future. To extrapolate ideas from different continents, from different cultures. So this idea of competition couldn't have been made possible without the interference of Inspirelli Awards and its president, Karez Meikal, who have plainly adopted this competition with love and dedication to make it a success. I would like to welcome you to this great event, and it's about time for us to start thinking about the future of Beirut. It's about time for us to start drawing the first lines in the blank page, to start analyzing, to start putting plans and strategies forward. And it's about time for Beirut to rise again. I want to congratulate each and every participant who have participated in this competition. You are all winners. And of course, I want to congratulate and say good luck to the finalists. Long live Beirut. Long live Lebanon. And thank you very much. There are uh, imaginary designs that cannot be executed. And uh, I've seen designs, beautiful designs, that economically are not possible. Uh, but I've also seen uh, parts of those designs that uh, if put together with other ideas can make a fantastic new port for the city of Beirut. Um, I would like to thank everybody again. Uh, it, it's been a pleasure working with you, Karel and Alex and uh, everyone. Uh, I'm gonna switch to Arabic a little bit so that everybody can understand me. مساء الخير بدي احكي كلمه صغيره بالعربي انا ماني مهندس انتم كلكم مهندسين وارشيتكت وانا بفتخر فيكم بس بدي اقول لكم انه هيدي الدراسه اللي انتم عاملينها وهالمسابقه اللي اللي بشكر الرئيس على رعايته لها وعلى تنظيمه لها لانه هيدي مثل ما قال بترد بيروت للعالميه وبتخلي بيروت مش بس الانفجار هو اللي بيلفت النظر عليها بكل دول العالم. During the years, Inspirelli Awards have become the largest student competition in the world, counting more than 150 countries of participants. And because the picture says more than a thousand words, we would like to share a lot of video about Inspirelli and our six years. This is the seventh. In the beginning, of the mankind's intellectual development, there were forces that carried aesthetics, such as beauty and harmony. They gave the world some of the most important buildings, inspiring millions. The name of this power is architecture.
for thousands of years. We have witnessed masterpieces of architecture that were created and shaped by cultures and nations. But as big as the world was, it was still divided. Although the power of architecture had to wait just a little while longer, the power of inspiration was unstoppable. 3 men had a dream. To give young people a place. Where they could share their dreams of architecture. And let their talents shine. And. They succeeded. The Inspirelli Awards is connecting young architects from every continent. Regardless of their economic, ethical, or social backgrounds. The Inspirelli Awards have become the largest student architectural competition in history. For the Beirut Port Competition, we had amazing 249 projects that came from 579 participants from 43 countries around the world. Incredible um, amount of incredible projects, but the first round of voting had to select the 40 best of them so that we got the finalist round. Many of you, many of the finalists are here with us today we are very happy you could make it. And the jury of the first round consisted of more than 800 jurors from our Inspirelli Awards jury, along with the special Beirut jury. In the second round, out of the 40 finalists, that was a little harder task to do for the Beirut jury, including the mayor of Beirut and other renowned world architects to choose the best, the best out of best. So it is uh, really amazing to have such talented people here today. So we would like to start first with announcing the best project of each of the Lebanese universities. I think that we're all excited to hear who are those Lebanese universities that have earned a place in the finals. And to do so, I would like to invite uh, Alexandra and Elio to hand out the certificates to the students. I would also la ask, like to ask the students that after, your, after you hear out your name and you receive the certificate to remain on stage because in the very end, we're gonna be taking a group photo. Without any further ado, university number one, the Beirut Arab University, Muhammad al Arnaout, with the project Beirut, a living port city. Muhammad, can you please join us on stage? University number two, the Holy Spirit University of Kaslik, Lebanese Maronite Order, Antonius Habib with the project The Missed Potential of Beirut's Port Interface.
Antonius, if you can please join us on stage from that side, please. Congratulations. <laughs> University number three, the Lebanese University. <laughs> Consist the team consists of Sergio Zrib, Peter Aoun, <laughs> Leia Lahoud, Rita Abizaid, Julian. Julian Khayel, Noor Kreide, Teya Bshara, with the project Beirut Port and Urban Life Generator. <laughs> Congratulations. And last, but not least, the Notre Dame University, Leia Hajj with the project Planning a Step Forward. Leia, please welcome on stage. Congratulations, Leo. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you again. Yes, time to take pictures. Yes. You can stand a little bit forward. We can see you. <laughs> the best project of the four Lebanese universities. Thank you. You may return to your seats. Thank you very much. Now we would like to move, getting closer, to the four out of eight best projects that were selected. It was really hard to choose the best ones, of course. And there were four outstanding projects that received a lot of votes as well. So, because not everybody can be a winner, we decided that these four projects will be granted the honorary mention. First of all, we would like to invite Kyle on stage as well <laughs> to congratulate. So the first honorary mention goes to Antonius Habib from Uzek. Yeah, I think you're going to have to come here again. <laughs> Should have done this the first round. Sorry, guys. <laughs> thank you, Inspiracy, for letting me showcase my project to the world. And thank you for letting the world know that Beirut is not alone. This, this uh, certificates are dedicated for my injured city. Thank you. Antonius has prepared his project video. We would like to now show you so that you all know which project is one of the best eight projects in the Beirut Port competition. Hello, I am Antonio Habib, a master's degree student in architecture at the Holy Spirit University of Kaslik. I live in Lebanon and I am presenting my project titled The Missed Potential of Beirut Port Interface. After dealing with urban problems and anarchic urbanization in Beirut and the chaos that has created social and spatial inequalities in certain places and in particular in the Dawar area, which constitutes the penetrating north of the capital and the neglected potential of port interface uh, on the north side of the Charles Hello Highway. In fact, a lot of after a lot of studies, a proposed highway that will connect Kinor with the capital in the future will cross the district and divide it into three zones. 
and since a lack of green space is prevalent, then it is designed to increase the percentage of green and the idea of creating an urban park connecting the three poles of interaction. In addition, the decision to take this highway into consideration will be justified Want to avoid urban problems and fragmentation during the future execution of this highway, especially now that the land is raw and ready, especially after the explosion, to by the possibility of transforming the Avenue Charles Hello into a boulevard fitted out with service areas and path for pedestrians and bicycles. Consequently, an, an opportunity to offer spatial equality to this place. Thus, after the analysis in zone one, uh, uh, the government's hospital and the technical layer, which is uh, in relation with the port, then a polyclinic function and the regrouping of the port libraries will be designed with a translation of the barracks of firefighters and so clean. Uh, in zone two, uh, it uh, is predominantly residential, then cultural and family functions are developed, especially in the building of the fire station, which has architectural significance from the colonial period. It will be transformed into a memorial for the firefighters martyrs that has died in, on the 4th of August. As well as three office buildings in connection with the port are designed to follow the architectural development of the of the south side of the avenue. In zone three, the or the zone of the inner circle, which constitute the heart, the heart of the park and the district was economic and commercial importance and a strategic location in relation uh, to the city. Uh, a desire thus to work on the facade of the boulevard and to give the exhibition area a landmark image and accentuate this penetrating by the new uh, expression of the forum by giving it a character of openness, internationality, so a concept of city gate more dynamic and attractive outside of city standards and a new representation for the exhibition areas which are no longer closed areas likewise this multifunctional green platform is not monotonous but in metamorphosis and changes according to each function hence the rationale for the sunken piazza either to ensure a protected space for children or Exterior extension uh, for the artist's house uh, was a safe underground connection for children uh, by connecting uh, all these components together safely. Thank you. Thank you. The second mention, second honorary mention, goes to Hanye Hashemifar and Sudek Saidi from Cyprus International University in Turkey. Please welcome. We are extremely honored to be receiving this uh, award and also uh, I want to especially thank Inspire Lee Karel and uh, for helping us reaching a stage uh, that we can proudly hold up to this award and also a special thanks to our professor uh, Dr. Esan Reza but he couldn't make it to here. Thank you so much. And again, the ladies have prepared a wonderful video presenting their project, so let's see it. Hello everyone, this is Hania Hashemka. And this is Kuhn Saidi. We are Iranian. And we are students from the Cyprus International University. We are studying Masters in Architecture here. Let's have a look at our project. So let's start with our concept. Our site rotates relative to the whole city. It rotates about a few degrees to the northeast. The site has topography and there are a series of buildings that are located on this topography and have the direct view of the site. This topography that the city has means a series of buildings that are tall and short with different skylines. Now we have these buildings and these different horizons that bring a series of forces or power into the site. On the other hand, we had an explosion that the wave affected part of the city. So these two factors are in front of each other. Here we have the city with different skylines at different times and also have a view of the site. On the other hand, we have this wave that has entered the site and city, which we have shown as a dashed line and to the radial shape affected both the whole site and part of the city. At the point where we showed that the border is between the site and the city, 
We said we can have a memorial monument, a memorial monument that is the border between the site and the city and connects the city to the site. And now this monument can have useful functions. If we consider the line of skies and look at them as a surface, it has started from the top and from the edge of the site and has taken the whole site in different ways. And they can be solid or void. If we bring the surfaces that we have into the site, this is the point where the explosion occurred. This explosion wave is in the form of an effect in these surfaces. Uh, which are in the form of a surface and below them is a volume. This is the existing site and this edge is the same edge as the memorial point. We have pages or surfaces that are framed in now which the tree out. Now let's check out the project. The number of people killed in this accident was 200. Now we put some cubes and some surfaces. And here we the have the existing building and that also we there is a metal because it's a memorial covering the whole project growing from the ground to the top to make a contrast in this project. The planning of the area is according to the function. The public areas are closer to the city and the industrial parts and offices are closer to the port. And now, on to the third honorary mention. I would like to congratulate Milan Ristic from the University of Belgrade and Serbia. Please welcome aboard. It's an honor to present my uh, university here. Uh, and uh, I would just like to add that uh, I, I saw uh, that uh, fantasy was a big uh, part of my project. And I really felt that it was uh, needed to be exaggerated, uh, that the ideas that I had needed to be exaggerated. So, uh, so the, uh, pa parts of it may become uh, realistic. <laughs> yeah, right. And let's see what this project looks like. Uh, hello, my name is Milan Ristic and it's my honor to present my project titled Beirut Sea Life, which was submitted to the Beirut Port Competition organized by Inspirelli. I studied at University of Belgrade, Faculty of Architecture in Serbia, and recently got my master's degree in architecture. Uh, so this project was a part of studio project in third semester of master studies, and it was done under mentorship of Professor Borislav Petrovic and teaching assistant Dalia Dukanac. Uh, the first step of creating a concept was researching Beirut and locating problems which could be solved through the project. Uh, two problems I chose as the focal point were poor connection of the city center to the sea and a residential area formed next to the port, which doesn't have any additional activities and they are badly in conditions. Uh, the goal of the project is to create a public connection to the sea accessible to all residents and travelers and connect the city center with the sea. Uh, by relocating the port on the east side of the existing port and reshaping functionally, the west part of the port is allowed to become a recreational zone. 
Uh, city center area is expanded with recreational facilities that include water sports and the beach. Water sports are placed far away from the port, while the beach is set on an artificial lake with filtered water which is safe to swim in. In this way, the sea is brought closer to the city and the city structure expands out to the sea. The city was shaped by steep terrain and relation to the water. This principle is used to shape the new structure on the east as well. Uh, by implementing housing with accompanying facilities that would provide the necessary density for the space to be safe and alive uh, 24 hours per day. The new residential blocks are formed in an open way that doesn't encourage separation and green spaces are public. Uh, new routes have been implemented and connect the residential area with the city center and the physical separation of the coastal zone has been avoided by modeling the terrain with a milder slope. Uh, the water sports facilities are located in a new floating structure and accommodate kayak, rowing and diving club as well as an underwater museum. The floating structures consist of floating body, supper structure, a mooring system and an access bridge. A floating body works in a similar way foundations work in regular building practices and the supper structure needs to be formed in a way that doesn't encourage tipping of the structure. Uh, the breakwater protects the floating structure from strong waves and the elastic mooring system and rotating access bridge allow the structure to follow the high and low tide. The sea was recognized as the source of life and making a better connection to it has the potential to improve Beirut's economic, social and environmental conditions. Uh, thank you for uh, listening and I'm excited for hearing other projects that were selected as the finalists. Thank you. Another excellent project. We have the fourth honorary mention to grant, and I would like to invite Zahed Arzune and Mohamed Ali Rezai Terani from Cyprus International University in Turkey. Come on stage. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's a pleasure to help Beirut. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the exact words, and let's see what the project is about in the next video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zahed Arzouni. I'm a Lebanese. I study Masters in Architecture in C Cyprus International University. My team member is Mohamed Ali Reza Tehrani, and we worked on reverberating the fragments of the Beirut port and it was assisted by Dr. Professor Ahsan Reza. Hi everyone, it's Mohamed Ali Reza Tehrani, Master of Architecture student in CI University. Uh, today I'm honored to present our, our latest work on reverberating the fragments of Beirut ports uh, with my teammates Zahid Arzuni and their uh, advisor, uh, Assist Professor Dr. Ahsan Reza. Lebanon is still healing after the catastrophic explosion that happened in the Beirut port on the August 4th, 2020, which killed over 200 people and injured over 7,500 more. This explosion also heavily damaged the Beirut port Silas and it broke the city apart. Beirut is the capital and the largest city of Lebanon our project idea is reverberating the fragments of the Beirut port. So our project's goal is to reproduce the reverberation of the explosion in order to heal and repair what has been destroyed. And for the new design of the reverberation, it modifies the port for the capital's future with the concept and we would want to generate commercial activities strategically suited around the port's region 
Uh, our main purpose is to add non-traditional enterprises to the port by reusing fragment shapes from the explosion to help in the reconstruction of the Beirut port. The connection of the port branches through the master plan to connect different zones, whereby a network of dynamic and beautiful gestures inspired by natural connection flows from the city of Beirut to connect and unite the port's fragment zones to the city fabrics, forming a totally new, highly linked urban landscape. This idea of the study is to adopt one of the very basic flame of surface in architecture, putting together architectural elements in an urban context. The place has a unique history as a memorial site and it should be built to bring remembrance especially for the employees and the owner people who perished on the Beirut port. Turning this tragedy into a source of healing and a chance to make the most out, out of a bad circumstances. This goal of design is to increase city commerce and profitable which will allow it to reclaim its purpose and improve commercial and social investment opportunities. Our port contains accommodation and hotel, a passenger deck, a commercial corridor, a bike station, a memorial place for remembrance of the people and, enter and entertainment place, an outdoor theater, an empty container zone administration and an empty container zone and we have truck and vehicle parking and we have the port admin a container terminal and we have a fish soup thank you very much excellent thank you and congratulations to all the honorary mentions so now it's the time to move on to the winners and uh, in the preparations of the competition, we had to tell the four who will be awarded um, to come here. So we had to tell them ahead of time that it's them who will get the award. But we didn't want to reveal all, so we didn't tell them what positions they actually won. So they don't know. They know they are the four best ones, but they don't know which position they gained. So I hope you are all excited. <laughs> And let's uh, go right into it. The third place doo -doo -doo -doo, goes to Ruben Epping from Germany and from the Lund University in Sweden. Come in. We would also like to invite the supervisor Maria on stage, Maria Rasmussen. Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, honor of participating in this competition and also the, the recognition, recognition for my work. Um, I would like to thank my schools that I studied at. So first of all, the uh, Leibniz University Hanover in Germany, and then secondly, the Lund University in Sweden, which is represented today by, Ma by Maria Rasmussen, who is the program director. Um, especially, I also want to thank my supervisor, Andreas Olsson, who didn't make it today, and also my examiner, Joni Ostrand. Thank you very much. Yeah, maybe I can say something. Uh, many very nice words today, I think. So I will not repeat them. But uh, I just want to say that it's very, very important for our students and young people <laughs> to participate in competition. So I will say thank you for that. 
And also thank you to the, to the city that has opened <laughs> an arena to explore. Uh, and I hope that it's possible to embrace the ideas of these young, uh, young students. And then I, I think that I will say something to you, Ruben, because you have been working very, very hard with your, with your uh, project. You have been working in different scales. You have been also working with a project that is very, very social, I would say. And uh, you have investigated the city a lot. Today it was quite surprising for me because you know the city very, very well. Uh, but you say something uh, that uh, was very, very important because you say the city is much more beautiful than what I saw in, the, in, the, in my screen, in the computer, no? And you also says that uh, you have been talking to the people and that was very, very nice to you. So it's a pleasure to be here with you, Ruben, and uh, for first time in the city. Thank you for that. So let's see what the project looks like, please. My name is Ruben Epping. I'm studying in a master's program in architecture at Lund University in Sweden, but I'm originally from Germany. I was working with the port of Beirut during my studies in Sweden. Early I decided to focus on public space, especially in terms of accessibility and usability. The waterfront of Beirut rarely allows direct access to the sea and is endangered by privatization, which is why I propose to secure the port's waterfront for public use and allow direct interactions with the water. Several public accesses connect the proposal to its surroundings. It prolongs the seaside promenade and complements the city centre with commercial and cultural spaces. It aims to extend the city towards the water and create easy pedestrian connections to the sea. To ensure a vibrant public life at the port, the open spaces are supported by chains of public attractions and interaction hotspots. The main public spaces all connect to existing public hotspots around the port to allow a fluent circulation of people in the city centre. The centrally located memorial park forms the biggest public green space. Public participation in the development can support the citizens' acceptance and attachment to the location. A canal is introduced to the site to cool down the outside temperatures and draw the sea closer to the citizens. The residential neighborhoods are placed in between the main public spaces. The dense structure can help to ensure privacy and intimacy. With a few housing blocks along the waterfront, Many plots are reserved for large architecture projects to create an iconic waterfront elevation. These buildings should offer public, cultural or commercial functions on the ground level to serve the public space along the water. The proposal is playing with the contrasting building scales that are found in Beirut. The heights are decreasing towards the main public spaces and increasing towards the waterfront. The port and waterfront can easily be accessed from the city, which helps blending in the new district seamlessly. To ensure a high activity rate along the water, the promenade consists of several zones with overlapping programs. It is firstly served by the bordering commercial and cultural buildings, and lastly by the actual promenade, with occasional access to the water. The structure of the residential areas is based on the port surroundings. It picks up on the density and variety of housing types, but arranges the buildings and blocks around shared gardens. The blocks consist of high-rise buildings, row houses and courtyard houses as an interpretation of the neighbouring architecture. The streets in the residential areas offer shared spaces and meeting points for the residents. Car access is reduced to a few streets and parking garages and most of the streets prioritise pedestrians. Now, yeah. <laughs> now we are moving to the second place. So the second place at the Beirut Port competition goes to Ružena Mašková, Jakub Tomášik, and Adam Rezle from Czech Technical University, Czech Republic.
Thank you and congratulations. We will be showing your video a little bit afterwards so that now we first uh, continue with uh, announcing the winners. So for the first place, we have two categories. First one is a winner for the Lebanese projects and the other one is international. So I would like to start with the Lebanese projects. So the first place in the category of Lebanese project goes to the team that consists of Sergio Zaid, Peter Aoun, Julian Mikel, Noor Kaidi, Rita Abelhaid, Lea Zahoud, and Thea Bechara. Let's pause for a photo, please. Adele. Thank you very much. You may take your seats now. All right, and now we have the international winner, the winner of the all 249 projects, which definitely was not an easy thing to do and go through all the rounds, but let's move to announcing who those are. The best project goes to Chi Kintan and Jennifer Weizang from Malaysia, and unfortunately they cannot be here today with us in person, but we do have them on Zoom, so we would like to invite them like this. Hello. Hello, and Hello everybody. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. Actually, we are not all in Malaysia, though. We are from uh, yeah, Tsinghua University in Beijing, although me and Jennifer are in Beijing, and Jet actually is in Malaysia at the moment. But unfortunately, because of the COVID regulations in China, it's making it extremely difficult, let's say impossible, for us to, to be there in person. So I'm, I'm very sorry on behalf of uh, the school. Um, but thank you so much for the opportunity today to be um, present virtually. Uh, I think just listening to everybody today, it's just incredibly uh, emotional, actually, to hear such uh, you know, in inspiring words uh, to show that we as architects can actually do something uh, to contribute to the daily life of people in need. I think that's it's very important. Thank you so much. And I'll give the word to uh, the students. Yes, let me show oh. you your beautiful award. Maybe Jennifer, you want to go first? <laughs> um, so first of all, we'd like to thank um, Inspire the Awards. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that looks awesome. <laughs> well, um, let's take the photo here on the screen with that. Could you hold it up again? <laughs> Otherwise they won't believe us in the school. <laughs> Could you hold it back again like that? We can make a photo on the screen. <laughs> yes, that's great. Perfect. Thanks so much. Jennifer Chi, would you like to say a word? Yes. Um, so thank you to Australia Awards, first of all for giving us this opportunity to be part of such a meaningful competition, as well as allowing us to join digitally as we unfortunately weren't able to join in personally. Um, and of course, thanks to all our tutors like Martin for all the guidance and support throughout the project. And we're sure that this is just the start of um, everyone seeing all the potential that lies in Beirut as seen through all the great submissions as well. Um, and we're really grateful to be part of this whole recovery process for the city. Yeah, thank you all. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um. Thank you so much. Thank you so oh. much, and congratulations again. Yeah. We will see you later. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. So that was a little technical thing that we are allowed to do now when we cannot have people in person. And now we have a special award we would like to give from the municipality. Mr. Mayor, would you like to come on stage, please? Um, <clears throat> I thought uh, this could not be complete without giving uh, an award to the uh, the, the team that has started this initiative, Alex and Elliot uh, from Beirut, uh, their heart was on, for Beirut and their heart was, uh, uh, you know, full of energy uh, to, to give back Beirut uh, its life after the sad explosion. photo. One more last award for uh, Mr. Carl, who has also given a lot to the uh, competition and has uh, really worked hard to for this competition to, to be successful as it came out. Uh, Mr. Carr, can you please join me to the stage? So would you like to see the videos of our awardees? Wonderful. Let's play, yeah, let's play the second place, the Czech Technical University. Hi, my name is Ružena Maškova, and I would like to introduce my colleagues. Jakub Tomašík and Adam Resler. We are all from Prague, Czech Republic. In June, we graduated on the Czech Technical University in Prague, where we studied architecture and civil engineering. During our studies, we met a lot of great people. The most important was our professor Luboš Knetl, who was our team supervisor for the Beirut Pod project. Currently, we are all work as an architect and CG artist in Prague. former port worker told the Guardian newspaper he warned for years it was a disaster waiting to happen and says nothing was done. With the framework of the design, the main issue was to solve the permeability between Old Beirut and the existing port. Currently, there is a highway between those two parts, which creates some kind of barrier. What is also problematic is the high difference between those two parts. The port is located at the 15 meters lower than the city itself. We solved this problem by using elevated pathways that grow through the entire urban complex and it even exceeds the highway. For pedestrians, it is easy to get from the old part directly to the harbor from where you can easily walk using the platforms and observe the wall city. 
To even the elevation difference, we also suggested three overlapping platforms that bring interesting elements to the city and it also creates space to hide underground parking and several technical facilities. The development is mainly high-rise. We believe that it's the right way to make maximum use of the area and with the right investors, it can even potentially help the city of Beirut to financially recover. Character of the development is diverse. The most represented are residential and administrative buildings followed by commercial spaces. And that was the second place. The first place from Lebanon, the project of Sergio, <laughs> Sergio Zai, Peter Aoun, uh, Julian Mikhail, Noor Kaidi, Rita Abizid, Lea Lahoud, and Thea Bechara. Urban Life Generator is a project that aims to convert Beirut port from an industrial barrier to an urban connector. The goal is to regain the functioning of the industrial part of the port and transform the port into an international landmark through different strategies. The functions created attract people and link to the city. The design approach began by studying connections with existing but non-functional landmarks, maritime circulation between old and new, creation of new water channels within the project, the visual permeability, the public and industrial ratios in the port, and the port functional trilogy from public to industrial. All aspects of connectivity are applied, whether through pedestrian, green, visual, railway, or others. Strategies include the creation of a main access from Electricité du Liban through a tunnel under Charles Hallow Highway that reaches directly towards the silos. This brings back the public function of the ground floor of EDL as was in its initial concept and links it with the port through an access that brings together the two sides of the port and gives a magnificent promenade on water towards the sea. The second strategy includes the incorporation of soft circulations along Charles Hallow Highway, such as facing Marim Khail train station towards Quarantina. This allows continuity in the transition and stitching of the now separated regions Quarantina, Marim Khail, Jemaize, and Beirut. The third strategy aims to convert Charles Hallow bus station to its original use, to eliminate the physical and visual separation along the port city interface and to maintain circulation within the station linking Marim Khail and Jemaize to the port. The functions are divided into public and industrial. The public zone incorporates various functions ranging from cultural, residential, commercial and others. The industrial zone, which extends until the current location of the cranes in the port, includes modern systems increasing efficiency and space management with a new location for the silos. The functions are purposefully decided to link with the surrounding, such as having an opera and a cultural center opening up towards the Martyr Square. The circulations are divided as to have the public and industrial circulation separated and maintain pedestrian continuity. Here are some examples of projects within the port functions that we worked on. First off, the Maritime Museum. Second, the Silos Memorial and Beirut History Museum.
third, the urban balcony. Congratulations. And the last, it is the winner of the international project, Chi Kin Tan and Jennifer Wei Zhang from Malaysia and China. The Beirut Lines envisions a bold elevated public hub, connecting four urban axes of the city and bridging across the existing urban fabric from the active coastline towards the historic green line, acting as a catalyst for both urban and social change. Our team consists of Jennifer from Austria and Jed from Malaysia, two master's students from the Tsinghua University EPMA program in Beijing, China. For many years, the Beirut port has represented more of a barrier than a connection between the city's communities and its coast. While culturally and morphologically diverse, the city's compromised mobility network and inward-focused developments have exacerbated the disconnection between the different communities and neighborhoods in Beirut. After the August 2020 blast, the reconstruction of the port area therefore opens up the opportunity for a pivotal civic gesture that will both catalyze the area and fill the void of active public spaces in the city. By elevating the structure, the Beirut Lines liberates the ground plane, allowing the brownfield site to recover through vital remediation using a sea of sunflowers, which along with the remains of the silos become a beacon of hope, encapsulating the resilience and strength of Beirut and its people. From all sides of the port, locals and visitors can follow the gradual recovery process of the site, from a large sunflower field into a public recreational landscape and urban expansion zone to promote greater social integration and economic viability in the future. Converging towards the port, the Beirut Lines also becomes the connective element between the active coastline and historic green line, interwoven into the existing network of organized spaces in between. Mixed using program, the public hub consists of a series of semi-open and multi-leveled courtyard platforms, creating a rich spatial experience for different social groups, all contained within a singular rectilinear form. The permeability of the structure and versatility of space enable the freedom to adapt to the public's needs, allowing the Beirut Lines to evolve with the city and its inhabitants. We hope that this project can inspire continued efforts in the reactivation of the port, encouraging the recovery process of the blast for both Beirut and its people. gentlemen, our last award on the agenda for tonight is the Public Choice Award, and it goes to Miriam Bukhalil, Clara Fahed, Renwa Mansour, Renwa Bufadil, Sara Atwi, and Melissa Sayli from the Lebanese University. This amazing project have received more than 3,000 likes on Instagram and more than 1,600 comments, out of which 1,000 of them were counted for this competition. And that's well a done. reason to celebrate. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us here today. It would not be possible without a generous support of our sponsors, of the municipality, of the help from the Sursok Museum, of the nearby hotel Grand Meshmush, also of the new TV and all the Czech uh, sponsors as well. Girl Hair Ravak, Reynos Aluminium, Phoenix, Ecophone, and Alka, and of course, amazing architecture. You will see a beautiful video out of it all over our four million followers soon. And as usually, we would like to ask all the finalists, all the awardees, if you can, can come on stage, please. And we would like to take a group picture as well with, the, with Mr. Mayor and with Governor. Thomas, Carl, please come on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to ask you to stay because there is a cocktail outside awaiting for us after we are done. Thank you.